Alrighty, let's look at our first question. Always mark the keyword. It will help you arrive at the correct answer quickly and also let you know what the question is looking for. We'll look at the first option. He says enable access to EC2 serial console at the account level and configure a policy that permits the DevOps team's AM role to use the serial console. EC2 serial console access is account wide and doesn't integrate with IM identity center authorization or offer full audit tracking hence incorrect well mode b b says activate ec2 instance connect on the ec2 ami adjust security group rules and allow the devops team to use the ec2 console for access ec2 instance connect depends on security group rules which violates the restriction on exposing remote management ports hence incorrect also please consider checking out my exclusive management cyber security google cloud courses on udemy by searching cloud guru amit or you can navigate to the url udemy.com slash user slash cloud guru amit where you will find tons of courses which will help you to boost your career by understanding the requirements of your manager their thought processes and how a project works in an it world Let's move to option C. C says attach an EC2 instance role that supports AWS Systems Manager. Define an AM policy for Systems Manager access and assign it to the DevOps team's AM role. Session Manager meets all compliance needs, no open ports, activity auditing, and AM Entity Center integration for access control. Let's keep this. We'll move to D. D says. Use Systems Manager Automation Runbooks to temporarily open remote access ports on EC2 instance and assign a role that permits runbook execution. Automation Runbooks that open remote access ports conflict with the requirement to avoid any internal or external port exposure. That being said, it's incorrect. The lock option C is the right answer. Okay. We are here where we need to select the lowest latency solution we'll look at option a a says use a network load balancer to terminate tls traffic tls termination introduces latency and complexity while disrupting end-to-end -end encryption incorrect we'll move to b b says use an application load balancer to terminate tls traffic then re-encrypt it before forwarding it to the Docker containers. Application load balancer adds overhead due to HTTP level processing and TLS re-encryption. Incorrect. Let's move to option C. C says set up network load balancer with TCP listener that forwards TLS traffic directly to the AWS containers without termination. Network load balancer with TCP pass through delivers native TLS traffic directly to containers maximizing scalability and maintaining encryption let's keep this well more to d d says configure amazon route 53 with multi value answer routing to distribute traffic across the docker containers ec um, the route 53 routing improves distribution but lacks built-in traffic forwarding encryption handling or load balancing efficiency hence incorrect the log option C is the right answer. Alright, now we have a brainstorming question. Let's look at option E. E says add a resource policy to S3 bucket that allows the application time role to perform read operations. Adding a resource policy is one option, but without first confirming correct role assumption and permissions, it may expose the bucket unnecessarily. Hence and correct. We'll move to B. B says deploy a new instance of the app in another AWS region and attach the same IAM role to it. Redeploying it in another AWS region doesn't address role usage or policy misalignment and won't solve an access denied condition. It's incorrect. We'll move to C. C says use IAM access analyzer to inspect the IAM policy for correct permissions and confirm that 
application is properly assuming the IAM rule. Reviewing the IAM policy with access analyzer and confirming proper rule, assumptions, pinpoints and resolves permissions issues securely. Let's keep this. Move to D. This is turn off the S3 block public access settings on the bucket and check AWS CloudTrail logs to verify role assumptions. Disabling block public access we can see buckets protection and is nothing to do with uh, role based access errors in so let's eliminate it lock option c is the right answer let's look at this question this is all about data in transit encryption we'll look at option a it says modify the amazon ec2 network interface settings to activate encryption for traffic between the instance and the attached volume EC2 network int interface settings do not support encryption options that secure data in transit to EBS volumes. It's incorrect. We'll move to now B. B says enable volume encryption on the Amazon EBS using AWS Key Management Service that is AWS KMS to secure data at rest and in transit between EC2 and e EBS. AWS KMS encrypts data at rest on EBS volumes not during transit between EC2 and EBS. Incorrect. We'll move to C. C says adjust the Amazon EBS volume configuration to activate TLS encryption for traffic between EC2 and EBS. EBS doesn't support TLS settings in volume configuration. Encryption must be handled by EC2. Wrong answer. Let's move to option D. D says configure Amazon EC2 to use TLS encryption with certificates managed by AWS Certificate Manager ACM for communications with EPS. EC2 instances can use TLS with certificates from ACM to encrypt data in transit before writing to EBS volumes. That being said, option D is the right answer, we'll lock it. Let's bring the heat to the snow. We need the first step in troubleshooting authentication failure. So the company uses Amazon Cognito to authenticate external users. Let's look at option A. It says examine AWS CloudTrail logs to detect any authentication errors linked to Cognito users. CloudTrail logs may help with event tracking, but is not the first step when configuration changes may have caused issue. So this is out. Let's move to option B. B says use IAM access analyzer to remove unused I am roles and users from the account. Deleting unused I am roles doesn't address login failures and code risk. Removing required permissions is incorrect. Let's move to option C. C says inspect recent updates to Cognito configuration, I am policies and role trust policies to uncover potential misconfiguration. Reviewing recent changes helps pinpoint misconfigurations or permissions updates that may have a disrupted authentication flows. Let's keep this. We'll move to D. This is develop a script using AWS CLI commands to reset all user passwords in the Cognito user pool. Resetting passwords without confirming the root cause may disrupt valid user credentials unnecessarily. In these out, let's lock option C as the right answer. Alrighty. Let's look at a question which will test your concepts on Amazon Guard Duty. We'll look at option A. He says use Amazon CloudWatch Logs Insights. CloudWatch Log Insights is useful for log analysis but doesn't offer built-in multi-account visibility for guard findings. Incorrect. We'll move to B. B says build a CloudWatch dashboard. CloudWatch dashboards visualize matrix not detailed findings from guard duty across accounts. Let's delete it. We'll move to C. C says set up AWS Security Hub integration. Security Hub integrates with guard duty and provides centralized aggregation and visibility of findings across organizational accounts. Let's keep this. We'll move to D. D says use Amazon Athena to query stored guard duty findings. Athena queries require exported data from guard duty to S3, adding complexity for real-time centralized viewing. Let's eliminate it. 
the lock option C is the right answer. All right, let's tackle a question about Dynamo DB, where we need to detect unauthorized changes to data. Let's look at option A. It says apply AWS KMS with customer managed keys to encrypt data stored in Dynamo DB. AWS KMS encrypts data at rest but doesn't confirm record level integrity or protect during transmission. Incorrect. We'll move to B. B says use AWS private certificate authority to secure data in transit between the application and DynamoDB. Encryption in transit via private certificate authority secures traffic but doesn't safeguard data during uh, data stored in DynamoDB or verify the unauthorized changes. Hence it's incorrect. Let's move to C. C says implement a DynamoDB encryption client to perform client side encryption and apply detail signatures to each item. The DynamoDB encryption client supports client side encryption and cryptographic signing, enabling end to end protection and tamper detection for table items. Let's keep this. We'll move to D. D says use the AWS encryption SDK to encrypt data on the client side and apply signatures to the table items. AWS encryption SDK is not optimized for DynamoDB and also lacks built-in support for table item structure and attribute level control. Wrong answer. Let's log option C as the right choice. All right, we have a real life scenario where we have three workloads for production, development and testing. So this is all about insufficient IAM permission error. Let's look at option A. It says check the AWS CloudTrail logs in production OU account for field cloud formation API calls during the deployment attempt. CloudTrail logs reveal which API calls field and why helping pinpoint permission gaps without altering existing policies let's keep this we'll move to b b says detach all scps from the production ou and retry the cloud formation stack update to test if the policies were blocking the api calls removing all scps weakens security controls and bypasses governance without confirming the root cause issue let's read this we'll move to option c c says validate the am role used by the cloud formation has the required permission to perform create update and delete actions on the resources defined in the template checking am role permissions is important but without cloud trails error trees it's unclear which permissions are missing hence incorrect we'll move to d D says align the SCP in the production OU with those used in the testing OU to ensure consistent, consistent policy behavior. Making SCPs identical across OUs may eliminate OU specific boundaries and doesn't explain the uh, root cause of the failure. Let's delete this. The lock option is the right answer. All right, now let's look at this question. We'll look at option A. It says monitor API activity using AWS CloudTrail and filter for relevant calls to determine the most recent change affecting the resource. CloudTrail logs events but doesn't capture complete post change resource configuration. Hence, incorrect. We'll move to B. B says enable AWS config to track changes and automatically record the latest configuration snapshot when multiple updates occurs aws config records configuration snapshots efficiently and maintains the final state after updates let's keep this we'll move to c c says use amazon cloudwatch to observe api traffic and identify the last operation that modified the resource cloudwatch monitors matrix and events but doesn't a routine structural configuration snapshots let's eliminate it we'll move to option d this is leverage aws cloud map to generate a time-based report of 
configuration updates and info the current state cloud map maps service discovery data and lacks features to track and store resource configuration let's eliminate it the lock option bsc red answer all righty this is all about lambda let's look at option e he says instruct developers to configure function urls with core support when accessed from external domains configuring cores governs front end request origin validation but doesn't enforce authentication on lambda function url incorrect will move to b b says set up an aws waf delegated administrators account to monitor and block unauthenticated access to function urls based on ou of the calling accounts aws waf that is web application firewall cannot enforce deployment restrictions for function urls or validate lambda's authentication settings during configuration let's eliminate it we'll move to c c says apply scps that allow lambda create function url config and lambda update function url config actions only when the lambda function url or type condition key equals awsm allowing certain actions doesn't prevent unauthenticated configuration unless denial conditions are also enforced wrong answer no to d this is apply scps that deny lambda create function url config and lambda update function url config actions and uh, when the lambda function url or type condition key equals none denying configuration actions where the authentication type is none blocks unauthenticated lambda function urls from being set up in production that being said option d is the right answer also please consider checking out my exclusive management cyber security google cloud courses on udemy by searching cloud guru amit or you can navigate to the url udemy.com slash user slash cloud guru amit where you will find tons of courses which will help you to boost your career by understanding the requirements of your manager their thought processes and how a project works in an it world so thank you so much for watching this video